Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health. Today I want to talk with you about some interesting things that I've found in regards to femoral acetabular impingement. So I've been looking at a lot of different studies in the last two weeks, looking at different angles of the issue, looking at all the research um, that started uh, the talk of bone morphology leading to pain. And I came across a great little um, summary article that was published in 2015 that lists the top 50 um, most cited articles in regards to femoral acetabular impingement. So I thought this would be a really good resource to look at and um, kind of see what's being used to um, discuss FAI as a bone issue and what studies and articles are being used to provide evidence for that belief. Uh, so in that article, um, it was it, there was something that's very easily missed and I wanted to point it out to you. So I, I will provide a link so you can go look at this, um, this article. So it has, this article has a list of the 50 top most uh, cited articles about FAI. So in the first 10 article, the first 10 in this list, there are a ton of um, articles talking about, the first articles talking about femoral acetabular impingement as a cause for hip osteoarthritis. Um, and there are actually the first eight studies are pretty interesting. The top eight most cited have a very peculiar um, commonality that you would probably miss if you weren't looking at the full text and if you weren't looking at all of the author's names. So um, I've talked in the past about the possibility of bias existing um, when research was done into bone shapes and hip pain and, and bone shapes actually causing arthritis. So I started going through these um, studies and in the first eight, they're all related to FAI and talking about um, surgery, talking about the beginning of this theory. And what's interesting to note is that there are five author names across these eight studies that show up multiple times. So these are the eight most popular, most cited studies that are supposed to uh, provide evidence for uh, FAI, they're supposed to provide some strong basis for FAI as an idea that should be researched and pursued. Now, there are five names. Um, there's Reinhold Ganz, Michael Leunig, uh, Javad Parvizi, Martin Beck, and Klaus Siebenrock. Uh, and so what you find actually is um, in these top eight cited articles, um, Siebenrock is the author of three, is one of the authors on three of these um, articles. Beck is an author on four. Uh, Parvizi is an author on four. Leunig, uh, Leunig is an author on six. And then Gans, um, Reinhold Gans, who is actually a very well-known, very um, highly celebrated um, uh, orthopedic surgeon, is actually he is an author on all eight of the top eight studies. Um, the reason I point this out is because these top eight studies are being um, cited as evidence, oftentimes as proof that the bone shapes are in fact the things that lead to um, arthritis. Uh, and many times in these eight studies, they actually refer back to one of the other studies that was done by one of these authors. Um, so at, on, on different studies, they are co-authors and at, on other studies, they are, um, you know, not. So sometimes you have one that's, you know, Gans and Leunig, or sometimes it's Gans and Parvizi, and sometimes it's Siebenrock and Parvizi, Leunig and Gans, and things get kind of mixed up that way. But in any case, there's kind of a limited number of surgeons that were actually involved in the investigation and all looking at the same hypothesis, all looking at the same theory. Um, and so in that there is a pretty strong um, uh, risk of bias. I'm not saying that there's any intentional 
uh, bias or anything like that. And when you actually look at their research, they do actually mention the need for doing large scale uh, population studies with asymptomatic populations, um, which we've already looked at in other videos, um, but I'll probably do some more videos on it as well. But in any case, I wanted to point out that um, a lot of the studies that were done initially in the, the, the papers that were uh, most strongly arguing for a bone, um, a bone based um, cause of hip pain were coming from a pretty limited circle. Um, and that really can strongly influence what comes out. And none of these things were actually um, of a super high grade of, of evidence, right? Many of these were either level four or level five um, studies. So they were not actually proving anything, even though they were cited um, with, by each other to uh, bolster the case that the bone shapes were in fact the cause of hip pain or the cause of future arthritis. So it's definitely something worth looking at and considering. Uh, I just wanted to bring it up because it's part of a larger project that I'm working on to kind of get the whole broad strokes of this, of this situation so you can understand how it developed and um, what the recent research means and why it's important relative to the original research. So hopefully you're getting a sense of, you know, the original research was fairly problematic actually, and now the recent research is actually showing that you know, the way things were interpreted in the past may not actually be the best way to interpret them. So I hope uh, this is helpful for you and I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.